Okay, so here we are talking about coriander. So we talked about um, cilantro, which is made from the leaves of the coriander plant. And now we're talking about coriander, which is made from the seeds of the coriander plant. So it's a similar but different kind of chemistry and experience and slightly in just different properties. So coriander seeds are widely used in Indian cooking, so that might be one of the first things you think of. Mmm, absolutely delicious in a salad dressing or in a dal or in those kind of breath freshness or sweet things that they use with um, um, uh, cardamom, another one of my favourites, another seed that's a seed spice that's just so aromatic and delicious and good uh, digestive, excellent for the digestion mm, and just a good tonic for any kind of digestive issues. So, it's coriander, it's also just a wonderful fragrance to diffuse or to use in a blend. Just really delicious um, herb, kind of herby, spicy, pungent smell. It's just really, hmm, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's coriander seeds. That's what it is, okay? If you know what those taste or smell like, this is what we have in a bottle, just in such beautiful raw essence of it. So from an emotion, you can use this then internally as a massage, diluted and uh, aromatically. It's gorgeous aromatically. Um, so from the emotional point of view, according to Emotions and Essential Oils, Volume 7, coriander is the oil of integrity. It can specifically help us to, in, to um, integrate our true needs and desires um, for ourselves. Um, it can help people who have a tendency to please others and to always want to fit in and adjust what their view of the world to fit with others' view of the world. But of course, each of us is unique. We all have our own path to tread, our own decisions to make our own consequences, to live with our own passions, purpose, needs. We need, and that may, that will be different from everyone else on the planet because we're not them and they're not us. But sometimes, for many of us, it can be hard to differentiate ourselves and our tendencies to just want to go with the flow of everyone else. And this can help us, similarly to clothes, to set those boundaries, but coriander is more just helping us to be in our own power and to see what the ways in which we may be betraying ourselves by trying to fit in. So for homeopaths out there, um, this is a bit like an essential oil phosphorus. So the homeopathic remedy phosphorus, they tend to be people pleasers. They love to please people and they will tell two different people exactly opposite answers to the same question because that's what they think each of them want to hear but when you ask them no you know you confront them and you say is that really what you think what do you think then they can be kind of groundless they don't know what they think because they're so busy trying to adapt to what they think other people think or want them to think so for those people or those of us who have that tendency or when we feel those tendencies arising, coriander essential oil can help us to find our own integrity, our own background, our own desires, our own need, our own expression of what it is that we need and want in this life. So that's coriander, to recognise our own gifts and what it is that we need to do in the world. Um, so I wanted to, on that uh, note, it's kind of appropriate that I've come to the flying section of the book. Coriander can help us fly in our own way. So when we're talking about aerial yoga, the flying postures are the ones literally where your 
hands and feet come off the ground and you're flying or swinging if you like. So I'll just start with some very basic beginner flight poses. So you can start with coming into a downward dog position with the weight of our hips leaning into the sling. Let's put it down so you can see. So that's a really lovely way to do downward dog. And from here and we can just swing a bit and bring our legs up. Find a balance, find the different stretches. A back stretch, upper arm stretch. Mm. We can come into a hip hang. So that's basically where I'm rolling up into a child pose. Hugging my hips with the, and just swinging. And from here, from the hip hang, I'm going to flip into, I've got my book on the floor here to prompt me, right? The wheelbarrow. And you can lock your feet around up behind you to, to make your hanging more safer. So, so here we go. I'm supporting myself with my arms and also with the sling on my hips. And by moving myself forward and back, I can get more of a stretch. Like a, a downward dog type stretch or I can build up strength in my wrists and my forearms is going to come in useful for all kinds of other postures later on. Back into a hip back. And from here, I'm actually just going to spread this out a little bit so that I have more material across my belly, my hips, which is more comfortable. Right, if it's all very narrow, it cuts into you more. I strip, spread it out a little bit, it's more comfortable. And I can start to sort of fly. I can try and bring my arms up. See how far up I can go, hold my feet up. Mm. So this is much more fun than doing this kind of Superman pose on the floor where you've got your face in your sticky, dusty mat and I'm just looking around at all the fur balls underneath the sofa. It's much more fun to fly in a hammock than trying to fly on the floor. Plus, holding on up here, I'm getting a really good shoulder strength, shoulder stretch. Opening up my shoulders here. And come back to the downward dog. Okay, so that's the beginnings of flying after a little bit of coriander. <sighs> to help me find my flight path. Mmm, delicious. Oh, it just makes me want to eat those, those little mm, seedy sweet things. They, what do they call that? Tell me what it's called that they put out um, before and after you eat in a nice Indian restaurant. Mmm, just full of cardamom seeds and coriander seeds. Mmm, delicious. Okay, so moving swiftly on, we're getting to the end of the C's in the alphabet, and the next one will be Cypress. So I'll see you shortly for the next one.